Hi there, Purple Light Girl here. Well, you're not mistaken, that's more snow out in the background there. So, yeah, April 14th today, Saskatchewan, Canada. Got snow last night. Good news is, is we were supposed to get more all day today and so far nothing. It's melting and uh, hopefully by tomorrow, most of that snow will be gone. But it's good moisture, it's good wet snow, so I guess we can't complain, right? We're out in the greenhouse today. Lots of beautiful things in here. And I'm going to be planting up some Cosmos. Now you could wait and plant your Cosmos outside, right about your last frost date. But I prefer here to plant them, or the majority of them, inside and put them out as starts. A, it's just easier to keep track of them and water them that way. And B, it just gives me a longer flower show with them because we have a short season. So the longer I can get a, the plants to flowering, the better. So it's about, about four weeks now, I believe, until my average last frost date. So it's a perfect time to be planting up Cosmos. And I have quite a few. Let's get them out and have a look at them and get them planted up. But first, oh my goodness, these tulips are just gorgeous makes it so worth planting them up early and having them out here or if you prefer in your house and uh, just enjoying them on these cold snowy wet days in April. Love them. Okay so I have my seeds here. This isn't all Cosmos. These are my kind of four weeks before my average last frost date sowing seeds here. Four to six weeks. So it looks like I have six varieties here. I have some from Burpee, some from Vessies, some from Stems, and some from TT Seeds. So a selection of Cosmos from a selection of places. I have Double Click, Candy Stripe. These are white with a pink stripe. I love them. Apricot Lemonade. I've never, I don't think I've tried these ones. I don't know if I've tried these yet. Looks like a new pack. Xanthos is a yellow one. I think this is the one I've normally grown for yellow, but I wanted a few more in the yard. I have Lemonade. Looks like it should be yellow. Really dark center on it. And Sensation Mix. Now this is supposed to be like whites and pinks and purple, is it? Deep Crimson. So, and there's supposed to be giant single blooms. So, there's a good selection I think here. A few yellows, but otherwise a, a selection of colors and uh, sizes, so I'm excited to get these started. I'm just going to be using these hex trays, Pro Hex I think they're called. Um, I've already used them once this season and I'm using them again. When I'm planting multiple varieties and I want several plants of each variety, it's nice to be able to use a tray like this and just fill it all up. They all need the same care, the same requirements, and it's just easy to keep them all together like this. I'm just gonna fill it with my regular seed starting mix here that I usually use. And I'm just going to do an initial layer of soil into the tray, give each, each little space a little push down, not to like completely compact the soil, but just to tamp it in a little bit, and then come back over and fill them up the rest of the way with just nice loose lofty soil. Anything like this that's found in here I'm going to pull out because starting seeds in, with bits like this can really get in the way. Better not forget the uh, tags here. Okay, so Cosmos, I want to be planted just about a quarter of an inch deep. So I'm just going to go make a very small dent in each of these spaces here. My potting soil is already nice and damp, so I, I got it nice and damp before 
I put it in the trays, and that can, that just helps to prevent your mix from slumping down after you've um, planted your seeds and maybe getting them covered up too deep or maybe exposing them when they want to be covered. So it's always good to have uh, damps mixed before you start. If you prefer to fill your trays with dry mix, then set them in a watertight tray and fill it with water and give the mix time to absorb that water and settle in before you go planting your seeds. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the sensation mix and I think this should work out to get about a dozen of each variety here. So that's what I'm kind of going for. I'm gonna try and put two seeds in each space. And then once, once they germinate, that should give me a guarantee of at least one germinating in each space. And then once they germinate, I will thin them out to the strongest uh, seedling. That's what the seeds look like. And I'm just gonna kind of set them in their space there. I don't know if you could hear, the snow is melting off the roof of the greenhouse and just dripping away out behind. You can probably see the drips behind there. So that's a dozen of the sensation mix. So then all you'd want to do is just go over, because they want to be covered about a quarter of an inch deep, you would just take a very small bit of your potting mix and just cover over each of the spots and give it just a gentle pat just to make sure there's good contact with the soil. Make sure you're not covering them with any like sticks or lumps, uh, especially when you're using uh, a peat based mix, sometimes you'll get really thick kind of chunky bits like this. And I think with coco coir and leaf mold you can get that as well. So just you don't want to cover up with that because it makes it difficult for the seedling to find its way through and pass that. And that's how easy it is to plant cosmos seeds. I will go through once the whole tray is planted and just sprinkle a very fine covering of vermiculite over top the entire tray. This isn't a necessary step, but I find it very helpful in helping to control that moisture at the top of the soil level where the seedling is trying to grow. That's where they need the moisture the most. And it also helps to prevent things like fungus and algae from developing on top of your tray, which can help to uh, keep fungus gnats from developing and getting out of control in your growing space. So I'm just uh, going to move on to the, the double click and get some more done here. Okay, Pueblo Cosmo is all planted up. Six varieties, a dozen of each variety. This is just going to be a beautiful display come summer. So Cosmos will, will bloom all through summer and I find well into the fall. They can be a little bit of a magnet for aphids. You can usually just put a strong stream of water on a plant infested with aphids, especially Cosmos. They're pretty strong plants once they're, uh, you know, grown up to a, a good size. So you can just give them a good spray with the garden hose and that should dislodge the aphids and it actually kills them off. So that's an easy way to get rid of them uh, if, you, if you're having an aphid issue. But you can also just use Cosmos if you have trouble with aphids, like say maybe in some of your vegetable crops or some of your more prized flowers and plantings, maybe you want to plant a few Cosmos nearby to attract the aphids away from those other plants and onto the Cosmos. So that's one way that you could use them in your garden. 
Another thing that's great about them is they make great cut flowers. So I have a variety of sizes of blooms and styles of blooms and colors of blooms and I can add those into my arrangements for cut flowers and I absolutely love them. They're a great filler plant. They add a little bounce and airiness to an arrangement and that's why I love them so much. They're also quite large plants so they can really fill in a space. So don't be fooled by those little seedlings when you plant them out. Give them the space they need. Whatever the package says, there's different sizes for the different varieties, but give them that space because they will take it. Most uh, Cosmos prefer to be in full sun and they like to be watered regularly. I do have one here. I think it's the, the apricot lemonade, but I made a note that it's more, yeah, it can take part shade. So the apricot lemonade, which is Cosmos by Pinatus. That variety can take a little bit of shade. Pretty sure all the rest are full sun. Yeah, so all the rest say full sun, but that apricot lemonade stated that they could be in part shade. I've never grown that one before, so I might plant a few in a little bit shadier area just to see how they turn out. But I've found that Cosmos uh, generally flower the best and grow the strongest in a nice full sun location. When you're watering them, make sure that you're not over watering them. They do not want to sit in soggy, wet soil and that's straight from seedling stage right up until they're done. They will rot off if, if they're kept in too moist of water. So Provide them with plenty of water, but don't drown them or have them sitting in water. Cosmos prefer a little bit warmer location to germinate, so these will be going into my house. They prefer to be around 20 to 22 degrees Celsius to germinate. So I will be taking them inside my house and letting them germinate there. I believe it's about a week to 14 days. If I recall for germination on the cosmos I will put a humidity dome over them inside that's just a clear plastic cover like this uh, you can get them generally they're a lot shorter and those are just fine that's probably what I'll use in the house it just happens to be what I have out here um, but that just is a the plastic doming just helps to hold in the moisture and humidity to help keep the the soil moist at the seed area so that they can germinate because if a seed starts to germinate and then dries out you've ruined the seed. So you want to keep it nice and moist without being too wet. It's always that Goldilocks perfect situation that they want. So once they've germinated, I will take that humidity dome off and I won't be putting them on a heat mat. I want to make that clear. Sometimes people think every seed you sow needs to go on a heat mat and it doesn't. A lot don't require that. Um, so they'll just be sitting in my regular room under under lights just because that's where my shelving is that all has lights on it and they'll have the humidity dome on them once they've all germinated i'll remove the humidity dome i'll let them grow under the lights for probably a couple of weeks and once they've gotten several sets of true leaves they actually prefer to be grown on at a little bit cooler temperature and by then it'll probably be perfect to be either in my greenhouse or maybe even just moving and sitting outside during the day we might be getting too hot in my greenhouse by that point so we'll just have to to wait and see what the weather has in store for us but uh they want to be more around like that 12 to 14 degrees celsius at that stage so that's what i would be doing and they might even be ready at that point to put outside but probably we'll still have, be having a little bit of frost so they'll spend that last week or two uh getting acclimated to the cool weather before they can be planted out it's, as soon as you're past those, the danger of frost, then you're good to put your Cosmos out. Go get yourself some Cosmos seeds and get them planted and you'll be enjoying Cosmos all summer just like me. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.